I want to start with Google's sort of broader mission of making information more accessible and useful. And for 25 years or so, we've done that, impacting billions of people across the world. What do you see as the future of making information universally accessible, and what role does language play in that? We can actually use AI systems and its development to make many more things available, especially information, especially harnessing the world's knowledge, but also the possibility that, in fact, it could actually help us overcome barriers. Uh, and I think language is actually central to many of the barriers that we experience as human beings traveling through life. The fact that we can't always access information, we can't always access knowledge, we can't always talk to each other, we can't always understand each other, we can't always understand other cultures. So I think if AI has the potential for us to transcend those barriers, I think that's very exciting. How do we make sure that we're not just doing that in, in Mountain View? How do we actually involve communities in those places? How do we understand the data, the nuances, the context. So even as we get ambitious, the questions of our responsibility become even bigger. Language was so essential to me, moving here from Nigeria when I was six. And I remember it being such a formative time in my life. You know, we moved as a family of five to Michigan, and here I was, you know, as a, as a six-year-old. And I was really at the crux of being, using language as a sort of propellant into a new culture. But when I came home, it was a tether. I think it's so fundamentally important to be inclusive because I think we want to be able to transcend these language barriers uh, and allow all of us, humanity, to be able to communicate with each other and understand each other. So there's a, there's a part of that. At the same time, I think it's also important to preserve cultures and languages and actually understand context and nuance. When we think globally about this, um, it shouldn't have to happen at the most privileged sort of corners of the world. Really owning up to Google's mission is making it available to everyone, regardless of circumstance, regardless of access, regardless of that privilege. And I think that's it's a huge one to touch on. I don't think the goal should be as much to homogenize yeah. as opposed to make universal accessibility. Sure. I think understand and preserve the ability for communities and cultures and the heterogeneity of that. Mm -hmm. I think we want to celebrate that. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want those things to become barriers mm -hmm. to either knowledge or information or learning. Now that we're building our most capable models, right, able to handle multiple modalities, how do you see that sort of playing into not only what we have been doing to bring information to folks, but the roadmap of what's to come for Google? So Google's been translating languages since 2006. And it used to be the case that you needed these kind of equivalencies uh, to do the kind of pairwise translation. And so until you had kind of equivalent levels of, of available training sets, you couldn't do language translation. Well, we now know that with these uh, transformer-based architectures, that isn't as limiting as it was before. That allows us to go beyond just the languages we have access to. So that's exciting. As you pointed out, the multimodality is interesting because now all of a sudden we can go from text to speech, text to video, and back, and vice versa. So people who have barriers in that sense, those are no longer limiting as much. So the possibility that we can expand languages and all these modalities, I think that's extraordinary. One of the things that you, you talk repeatedly about is being bold and responsible at the same time. We focus a lot on that at Google Research. We want to make sure that our velocity and acceleration of innovation is there, but you, we also want to do so through the lens of responsibility. And I'm curious, uh, languages very much represents that. We've talked about that a little bit. What do you see as the sort of next generation of being responsible as we go out into the global community? What I think we're all trying to talk about, this idea that these two things don't have to be intention. I think we can be extraordinarily ambitious about how do we benefit the world in the most extraordinary ways and at the same time do it responsibly. We have to do both. So when I look to the future, I think as these technologies, especially around language, become even more capable, the questions about responsibility also go up. How do we involve communities who are going to have to use this technology uh, in personal ways, uh, in very local ways, when you and I are not in all those places? So I think 
The questions only get bigger uh, as our ambitions get bigger to benefit everybody. Talk to me about what makes you excited when you think about product application when it comes down to languages. For me, it's both the expanding the languages, expanding accessibility, but also accessibility not just to things that are online. I think there's a whole realm out there of physical, real-world information and knowledge. Uh, you know, I was recently on a trip to Japan, and outside of Tokyo, there's very few things in English. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it was wonderful to be able to pull out my phone, Google Lens, and point at menus and things to look at that in the real world. So the, the ability to also use this technology, not just to interact with information that's online, but information in the real world, mm. uh, interact with sounds, interact with the things that our senses make available to us. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of that is extraordinary. So there's still lots of things to get excited about. Mm -hmm. And the multimodality to me is, is of particular interest just because I think about people who have different you know, you know, senses available to them. Being able to harness all of that and as part of the communication medium that we use to communicate and interact with each other, I think that's exciting.